Hello everyone and welcome back to Chef Melanie's Kitchen again. So this week we're going to be making a type of pastry, it's called an empanada. Now an empanada is basically Argentina's answer to our Cornish pasty with a different type of spiced filling. And this is in connection with what I've been doing with my students at college. So um, college is into full swing now and we've just finished week three. The first week we just do nice skills and for then for two further weeks we tend to do soup and bread dishes so we start going into baking but now for the next couple of weeks we're really going to go even further into baking. Moving on from breads and then going on from breads to pastry related items hence you know making the empanadas today. Pastry related items and cakes and things. And what I'm going to discuss in this video is the difference between um, working with bread and working with pastry and cakes because even though it's still the same cookery method, even though we're still talking about baking, um, making cakes and pastry is completely the opposite, completely the opposite preparation method as you would for bread. You know, bread, you're going to be rough and ready and you're developing that protein in the wheat which is, um, which is called gluten, which we've been discussing in class. With cakes and pastry and stuff like that, you want to do the opposite. You want to you want to like not move it as you as little as possible. You you don't want to develop that gluten because you want flaky short pastry. You want fluffy scones. You don't want crusty rolls. So I'm also going to be looking into seasonality, like I do with a lot of my um, a lot of my recipes as well. And I'm just going to go through the different ingredients. Traditionally, it's normally made with beef. Um, but pumpkins and what's similar to what we're working with today, squash, is also quite popular in Argentina as well. So that's sort of one of the versions we're doing. I've spoken with my level one, my level two and my apprentices um, recently about seasonality of food, what that means and why it's so important to us as chefs. And this is highlighted in what we're doing today. So I know there's only half of it. This is half a butternut squash that I grew by these bare fair hands. And if you look at that, so I've already used half of it, because that's the bottom half, which has got the seeds in. I've already used half of that. I made, I made some really nice um, fritters with dip, and that's really nice. But um, you'll need ha half a butternut squash. I reckon once I've peeled and diced that finely, um, it'll be about 800 grams, I would say. Um, also, as well, talking about seasonality, I've got some ch cute curly chilli, and one of my neighbours has given me a load of chilies. so chilies are sort of nearing the end of their season now. And I've got some fresh oregano which you can use for you which you can use dried if you want um i say use a teaspoon of dried otherwise yeah so i'll go through the um the, we're gonna make the filling first i'll explain why in a minute we're gonna make the filling first allow it to cool down and then we'll make the pastry and i'll discuss a little bit more about how you make good pastry uh so the filling so we've got half a butternut squash and um, which we're gonna finely dice brunoise that my um that my students should know should the french cats uh two tablespoons of just plain vegetable oil one white onion, finely diced. One red chilli, which I'm going to finely chop up. Um, if you like it hot, you can keep the seeds in. Um, I think I'll remove the seeds, but I think it's quite a spicy chilli anyway. You'll need a nice big chunk of fresh ginger, which we're going to peel and finely mince. Uh, you're going to need, as said, from my garden, but a tablespoon of fresh oregano or a teaspoon of uh, dried. We're going to need um, a quarter of a teaspoon of garlic salt, Half a teaspoon of garam masala, which is an Indian spice blend, but um, it's got ingredients um, in Argentinian food that's similar. And we're going to have one teaspoon of paprika as well. Um, then we're going to add half this stock cube made up to 200 millilitres of stock um, to add a little bit of sauce to this, um, to this filling. Uh, two teaspoons of sugar, you find that um, sugar is used quite a lot in Argentinian. They like to mix um, sweet and savoury, which I do as well, so that works out well. Um, and then, this is hardly officially Argentinian, um, but um, if I find that once I've made the sauce ingredients that it's a bit um, that it's a bit wet, I might use a teaspoon of, um, of Bisto granules just to, just to thicken up that sauce, because I don't want the sauce too wet, um, otherwise it will all leak out of the empanadas. So possibly a teaspoon of this if I need it, but well, I might not need it, we'll see how that goes. Um, so that's the filling, which we'll make first and then cool down. And the pastry is really, really easy. So the pastry is you'll need 400 grams of plain flour and you'll need 100 grams of suet. So this is vegetable suet. Um, 
which is basically a type of fat. You can also get beef suet, which is um, sometimes from the fat or from the, some from the kidneys, from the lining, but it's a type of fat, basically, and 100 grams of butter, which will add a splash of water and a bit of salt to make pastry. And that's really what you need to make pastry. It's all about ratios. You don't have to use suet, but I like the texture of suet and pastry. But if, as long as you've got sort of two to one, I speak to my students about ratios. So 400 grams of flour to 200 grams, obviously 100 each, of fat with a bit of water and a bit of salt to bring it together. As long as you do that, doesn't matter how you're making a teensy batch of pastry or a massive batch of pastry, it'll always turn out well. Um, and I'll show you how we make pastry in a minute. So I'm now gonna make the filling. So in here, I've got my onion, I've got my butternut squash, I've got my ginger and a bit of salt and pepper and the oil. And I'm just going to fry that for, uh, for about 10 minutes, uh, stirring quite often. Now we're going to add our oregano and our chili. I've decided to, um, to keep the seeds in and we'll find out later once I try it if that was a mistake. <laughs> Eight levels. Oregano, chilli and all your spices. So you get your sugar, your garam masala, your garlic, your paprika. That's all going in there now. And all you're going to do is you're just going to stir to coat. You're going to add your stock. So in goes your stock. Lovely. Give that a stir and then you're going to need to let that cook and bubble up for eight minutes. I've taken it off the heat and I'm gonna allow that to cool whilst we're making the pastry. It's important that you don't put piping hot filling into any pies or tarts or quiches or anything like that, because if you do, the bottom of the pies or pastries don't cook properly. And just like our, just our lovely Mary Berry says, um, nobody likes a soggy bottom. So I put 400 grams of flour into a bowl. I'm just gonna add a pinch of salt to it. And then I'm gonna be adding my suet and my butter. I've diced the butter into little chunks because it makes this um this stage a bit easier, a bit quicker. And what we're gonna do is oh, I almost spilled the water then. We're going to um we're going to use a method called the crumbing method. I know I've spoken in previous videos. The two main fat incorporation methods found within uh, baking is the creaming in method and the crumbing in method. The creaming in method is when you cream together usually butter and sugar using the back of the spoon. But this is the crumbing method, which is the same method you'd have for um, crumbles, the same method you'd have for um, shortbread biscuits, for instance. It's when you're rubbing with the tip of your fingers your fat into the flour. So you need to do this until uh, this becomes a fine sandy consistency. Now you're gonna add your water. Uh, I'm gonna say roughly about 100 ml roughly but um go easy on it because you don't want to add too much water to pastry because whilst bread dough and pizza dough can be sticky pastry should never be sticky so you're just going to start gently bringing it together with your hands unlike with bread where you're kneading here you're gently bringing it together um, and once it forms a dough um, you can then cling film it. So there's my lovely pastry that I've cling filmed and that's gonna go in the fridge to rest for half an hour. So whilst bread proves, because it's got yeast in it and that yeast, that living, breathing yeast needs to breathe and get bigger, there is no yeast in pastry. So we rest pastry and what that does is after resting and then taking it out of the fridge, it makes it easier to roll. So my suet pastry has rested and now I'm gonna roll it out. I find it easier just because I don't have too much surface space here to um, to do that half half of the time. So I'm gonna gently sprinkle flour and put some on the rolling pin as well as I roll out. I want to roll that out to half a centimetre thick and then I will get so yeah, half a centimetre, 0.5 centimetres, and then I'm gonna use an eight centimetre cutter to cut out shapes. You can reform the dough, but I would only reform the dough about once because the more you reform, the more you work, the, the less good and flaky the pastry will become. Um, we'll do that and also preheat your oven to 190 centigrade whilst you're doing this. My lovely conveyor belt that I've got going on in my kitchen. So I produced 34 little discs. Um, these are sort of snack, si snack size. Uh, empanadas but you can do larger sort of Cornish pasty size ones if you want. I'm going to show you how you do one, one of them up um, which I think I should be able to manage uh, one handed I reckon. So about two teaspoons of your mixture. Then you notice know, so I've got a little thing of water. I'm just going to dampen the edge a little bit with a bit of water and that's going to help it stick. Okay then you turn it over like that then we're going to push down the edges, okay? And don't worry if some of the filling comes out because then you can um, you're going to crimp you're going to crimp the edges anyway. 
So just crimping the edges there, and that's what that water's going to do. That water's going to help stick that. If you need to move some of the filling out of the way, that's that's fine. I'm going to put that, and then you're going to make a little hole. I've, li I've lined a tray with a grease proof. I think I should be able to fit about 12, possibly 15 per tray, so I'll have to do these in batches. I'm cutting a couple of small lines on there, and then I'm just going to make little crimp marks with my fingers along the edges. You can also make crimp marks with, um, you can also fold around the edges like a pasty or you can use a um, fork as well. So that, once you get that off the side, that is going to go onto our tray. And I'm going to line up, I'm gonna fill this, and then I'll show you what we do with that. I'm just gonna very quickly do is I'm going to egg wash these. So egg wash is a term meaning to brush with beaten egg. I've got beaten egg with a splash of milk in there, and I'm just gonna brush all these over. You don't have to use, especially if you're allergic to eggs, or you know, um, or you don't want to just use one egg for this. You can brush it with milk, just on its own, or at a pinch you could brush it with oil. But I find that using egg, egg washing, using a bakery term, um, gets the best golden colour on them. Um, I'm going to brush all these, and they're going to go into the oven, uh, in the centre of the preheated oven, for 20 minutes. So here is my first batch out of the oven, arranged nicely on a plate. So that is my butternut squash and chilli empanadas. The perfect example of bakery techniques, of pastry making techniques, and using seasonal food, seasonal autumnal food, when it's at its best.